Okay, so start thinking of your questions. The panel have done extremely well at keeping to time. And um, uh, there's now the opportunity for you to ask them some questions. Thank now, you. lots of hands went up in the last session, so let's see. You can't be that hungry. Um, if not, I will kick off by just asking the question I asked before about scale. We've seen what happens. Ah, okay, there you are. Say who you are. John, uh, John Stageman from the uh, TSP Health Tech KTN. Um, question for Andrew, if I may. Um, in a parallel session, John Bell was talking about the possible developments in adaptive licensing of new medicines. And I'd like Andrew just to describe what he feels the developments in e-health need to be for that to take place effectively in the UK. All right, that's good. Is this on? Can you hear me? Yep. Good question. Um, adaptive licensing is, is dependent upon definition of value, uh, especially when medicines uh, reach the real world. So I think the, if one considers phase four, uh, as we currently perceive it, it's actually nowhere where it needs to be in terms of it's responsive, it's a yellow card system, and it's pure and simply about drug safety rather than effectiveness. So I think that in terms of the information platforms that we're creating, it will allow us to monitor the real world effectiveness of medicines as they are introduced either in phase three or for phase four. Uh, saying that observational data are tricky to analyze because of confounding. So uh, alongside the informatics, there's an urgent need to look at capacity building of the expertise uh, in terms of statistics, statistical genetics, and other disciplines who have the ability to understand these data sets. Please. Hi, I'm Tim Smart from King's College Hospital. Uh, a question for Julie, if you don't mind. Um, Julie, uh, can you tell us whether you, whether you think that the um, IT and telecoms industry uh, understands how to effectively partner with organizations like, like yours and mine? Um, in order to keep the time and mark, I'd just say no. However, I will expand. One of the problems I think has happened is that IT companies have behaved in a sort of IT way and said, here's an IT system, use it this way. And I think the real way to do it is say, here's clinical practice. IT must fit how, how clinical practice works. And I think too many systems have failed because we've tried to make clinicians behave in a different way to fit an IT system, and that just doesn't work. It's about real life clinical practice, what patients need, how nurses, doctors, everybody else works, and getting the IT to make their life easier. If it makes their life harder, it will not get used. It's got to be clinically relevant and easy for people to use, make it easy to do the right thing. So I think IT companies, are, I think, have started to learn the lesson now. But I think that's why we saw so many problems, certainly in this country in the past. So Julie's system is bespoke. Let me ask you a question. Do you look at Julie's system and say, I've got all that, or I'm jealous of that, or how does the King system compare? Um, I, I think we're trying to learn from, from, from what Julie has, uh, has done and, and, and how to use it well. I mean, we have similar things, uh, but... But I think there's no doubt that Birmingham has uh, has trailblazed in uh, in the NHS in England. Oh, so there, there's one of your cheerleaders. Um, <laughs> so, 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 so I'll ask Julie the question then, which is which is the question of scaling. Um, how are you going to get it scaled? Um, I was whispering to Andrew, have you got anything like this at Nine Wells? And he said, yes, we do. Um, how do we get this all sorted out and scaled up? Um, we anticipated the question. We've had a, a lot of interest. Um, actually more from abroad than, than from the UK, but we've got a commercial partnership now that we're well able to take this into as big or as many places as, as necessary. Excellent. Left that man ask a question, he was the one who Oh, he was a quick... <laughs> I thought he was clapping rather than asking a question. Say uh, who Roger, you are. <laughs> Roger King, Chairman of International Hospitals Group. First of all, may I compliment you on your presentation that I thought was outstanding. But uh, my question is that apparently you say you spent 545 million on the new hospital. Did that include the IT system? And if it didn't or did, what, is the, what was the cost in broad terms of the IT system that you referred to? OK, 
Okay, 545 million is the cost of the building. It didn't include IT. And what um, was the cost? Sorry. Well, it, it, it's hard to estimate because actually, um, if there's anybody who um, economically regulates me in the room, please close your ears. We never had a business case and we never did it because it was the right thing to do. We estimate that over 10 years it's cost us about 25 million. But in the overall scheme of things, that is tiny because we've well saved more than that every year. And one last question. For the 554 million, do you know approximately how many square metres it was and how many beds you got for that price? I know how many beds I've got. I can't tell you a square metre. I can't tell I you a metre. I think you've scheduled an architectural design question. For <laughs> okay, sorry. It's actually outside the remit of this panel. Yeah. How many beds, sorry? 1,213. Thank you very much. I'm sure Julie will answer more questions. There's a question here in the front. Just wait for the microphone. Microphone here, please. Oh, thanks. Uh, my name is Simon Talbot. I'm from P3 Medical. Um, can somebody comment on the conflict between the, the benefits and the power of the cloud potential and the need for confidentiality? Okay, who wants to have a go at that one? It's a rather technical question. Um, Andrew, you're probably... Andrew, you're the, you're the um, I, I'm not a technical person. I'm a doctor. But uh, my understanding of it is that every other major industry has... has has moved to cloud-based environments. I, th I think there's almost a problem with the word cloud. It's pejorative because people have a sense the data are floating around. But you can have private clouds. You know, NHS Trust could have a private cloud. What it gives you is the ability to parallel process in a very efficient way. So I, I think healthcare has to move towards the cloud. Is is my and actually the platforms I described are cloud-based, but they're private cloud-based. So we, we run a cloud-based service out of Singapore, and we managed to meet the information government's requirements for Australia and New Zealand. So these technical barriers, barriers you can get over. I thought it was an interesting answer. I'm not technical, I'm a doctor. I thought doctor looks <laughs> quite technical, but maybe increasingly there's a question at the back there. Thank you. Uh, Toby wilson Mortworth from uh, Atlantic Healthcare. Um, I want to commend you on your presentation. I think it's a great event. Um, the company that I represent develops solutions for unmet needs, uh, particularly in patients' uh, acute conditions in the hospital environment. And I think the British government over the last few years has done a tremendous job in stimulating development of technology in the UK, and I've been a benefit of that, and you know, it goes with the TSB and so forth. But I wonder if you could uh, elaborate on how uh, the NHS plans to take advantage of that investment and perhaps improve uh, and find ways of adopting the technology uh, more quickly? It's the scaling question again, I think. Who wants to have a go at that? Julie, do you want to have a go at that? I mean, I think as I said this morning, the NHS is, is a system rather than one organisation and I think that um, too much is often left up to individual chief execs and trusts. So I think those of us that are really bought into wanting to innovate and wanting to drive more research get it and try very hard and we will try very hard to apply for as many grants as possible to actually push that forward. I think the problem we have is that we've got too many people who don't realise the value to the patient care that they're delivering of doing research. And so I think I've got a personal responsibility about trying to convince my colleagues of that. And I think that the latest development the government's pushing out called Academic Health Science Networks is attempting to do that so that we will, by peer pressure, try and um, convince our colleagues of the need to not, not, not only do research or take part in trials, but actually to use latest innovations and to to see their role actually that this is about important for, for the quality of care as much as anything else is in driving innovation in very good it never occurred to me at the start of this session that i might be able to deliver you to lunch on time <laughs> so i'm going to do that but what i want to do is i want to thank the panelists i think we have had an amazing glimpse into the future of healthcare, and healthcare has got to be about the ability to measure the outcomes because that's the thing ultimately that will drive quality, it will drive efficiency and effectiveness. So I think all four of our panelists have given us a fantastic glimpse into that future and I think the challenge for all of us is to implement it. And I think the issue that we constantly see with data is that there are, it is part of the sort of battle, if you like, between utilitarian and libertarian philosophies. There will always be people who say, I don't want my data used. But there's one very good reason why we should do this, because actually it's got to be the future of the best healthcare systems to use data responsibly. It's about actually using it whilst protecting 
the identity of individuals and so using it confidentially. But thank you to all of the panelists. Thank you.